I'm Garrett Ryan, and this is the short answer. Today's question is, how deadly was gladiatorial combat? The following is an abridged excerpt from my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. Gladiators fought under the watchful eyes of two referees, who wore distinctive striped tunics and used long switches to signal fouls. These men ensured that both combatants followed the rules, and may have even called timeouts if a fighter was badly wounded or visibly exhausted. Some fights were terminated by a fatal blow. A few were declared a draw, usually after evenly matched gladiators had fought to a standstill. The majority, however, ended when one gladiator, disarmed, wounded, or simply unable to continue, raised a finger in the gesture of submission. The head referee then stopped the match and looked toward the sponsor of the games. The sponsor, in turn, listened to the audience. Those who wanted to spare the defeated gladiator called out, Miss him! Pardon! and waved handkerchiefs. Those who thought otherwise shouted, Yogula! Cut his throat! and jabbed their thumbs at their necks. If the cries for death prevailed, the victorious gladiator struck a fatal blow. A few unfortunates were subjected to a more theatrical execution. A slave dressed as the demon Charon materialized on the arena, carrying a sledgehammer. Gliding past the referees, he lifted his hammer high, paused for effect, and brought it down on the doomed man's skull. The corpse was then dragged from the arena behind a slave costumed as Mercury, guide of the dead. Roman spectators knew a good fight when they saw one, and respected skill and bravery. If a defeated gladiator had fought well, they usually called for him to be spared. And when the crowd called for mercy, the sponsor of the games was likely to listen. Gladiators were hired for a small fraction, perhaps 5 or 10 percent, of their estimated value. If they died in the arena, however, the sponsor of the games had to pay their full value to the master from whom he'd hired the gladiators. Only an extremely wealthy man could afford to allow indiscriminate slaughter. We sometimes hear about no-mercy games, in which every match was carried to the point of submission or death. Such bloodbaths, however, were rare. Most sponsors preferred to minimize casualties, and some went so far as to issue blunted weapons before a fight. Even gladiators were reluctant to kill their opponents. This was partly an expression of camaraderie, since the combatants in a match often came from the same school. But it was also a matter of professional pride. In their funerary inscriptions, many gladiators boast that they saved many souls or hurt no one. The spectators, for their part, appreciated fighters who could demonstrate their skill without slaughtering every opponent. A Roman poet wrote an epigram praising a gladiator who always wins but never kills. Defeated gladiators, in short, were often spared. To judge from the fight records preserved on gladiators' tombstones, perhaps one in five matches ended in death. Although a few champions managed to rack up over a hundred victories, the typical gladiator who survived to retirement would face a total of ten or fifteen opponents over the course of a five- or six-year career. Most gladiators who died in the arena probably did so in their first or second fights. The more experienced they became, the more likely they were to survive. A high-ranked gladiator had learned how to win. And if he lost... He was very expensive to kill. For the full answer, and for many other fascinating details about the ancient Greeks and Romans, check out Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, available wherever books are sold. Thanks for watching.